Hi, I'm Josh with Woodland Mills, and this is our full-length product video about our TF810 Pro Series PTO-driven wood chipper. In these videos, we like to cover everything from the weights and dimensions of the crate the chipper shipped in. We're going to touch on the delivery process. We go through the assembly, and then we do a full in-depth product walk around, and we're going to cover the features that make this chipper a Pro Series and make it unique. The crate dimensions are 46 inches wide, 46 inches deep, and it's 43 and a half inches high. The shipping weight is 1,124 pounds. Because of its size and weight, it's gonna to have to be shipped by transport truck. And then within our flat rate shipping, we include a tailgate service to get that down to the ground for a curbside delivery. The product weight within the crate is 974 pounds. And the assembly process to take it from what's in the crate to a fully assembled chipper you're gonna to wanna to put aside three to four hours. These chippers are 90% assembled in the crate, but you are gonna to have to assemble the infeed panels. The discharge chute has to be bolted on, and then the front linkage gets bolted on, and then you can put your tractor on it and lift it right out of the crate. You'll be able to back up with your tractor, lift it out of the crate, fully assembled. The assembly process is all covered in our operator's manual, which is kept here at the back of the chipper in our manual tube. Before I start the product walk around in the tractor compatibility area, I first need to touch on our twin flywheel technology that makes our Pro Series unique. Underneath the clamshell here, we have two flywheels spinning at independent speeds, and that's gonna become relevant as I talk through the drive system up here at the front. For tractor compatibility, we're recommending 35 horsepower in up at the PTO. We've got a category one three point hitch that's quick attach compatible. And then we have an adjustable top link with two positions and it's also reversible. So you can raise that pin up if it suits your tractor better. We include a PTO shaft that's adjustable in length and trimmable. And we cover the process of trimming that to match the chipper to your tractor in our operator's manual. We're also shear pin protected at the front. We've got safety chains to make sure the outer sleeve stays stationary. The PTO shaft connection here at the chipper is a six spline connector. And this is on a full two inch diameter main shaft that runs right through to the primary flywheel. It's housed here at the back as a four bolt flange bearing with a Zerk fitting at the top to keep that bearing greased. You'll see below here, we've got two different belt systems. So we're running our first belt down to our hydraulic pump at just over 540 RPMs. And that's gonna provide the hydraulic pressure to run the infeed system. And then in the back here, we have a second pulley, which is sending up a higher RPM to drive our secondary flywheel inside the clamshell. To keep those belts tensioned, we've got self-adjusting spring-loaded belt tensioners for ease of use and ease of maintenance. We include a chainsaw holder that's adjustable for your bar size and just gives you a convenient spot to keep your chainsaw with the chipper. Now I wanna talk about the discharge chute. We've got an indexing pin here. It's 360 degrees rotatable. And then we have a chip deflector at the top. Again, for placing the chips far away, and we can adjust it down to keep the chips closer to the chipper and lock it in place. Now I wanna open up the clamshell and show you the twin flywheel technology. With the clamshell open, we can now see the two flywheels. And I'll start by describing the primary flywheel and its function. So the primary flywheel holds the cutting blades and it does 90% of the work in the chipping process. This flywheel is mounted on the two inch main shaft, which gets directly driven from the PTO shaft at the 540 RPMs. Because the primary flywheel is direct drive, it makes the best use of the tractor's available horsepower, bringing it straight to the flywheel and the blades. The benefit of that 
is we're gonna be able to chip the largest branch possible in relation to the tractor's horsepower that's hooked up to the chipper. Traditionally, you would see the discharge paddles for the chips welded to the back of this primary flywheel. With our twin flywheel design, we've separated the two functions. So the primary flywheel doing 90% of the work is spinning at 540 RPMs. And then our secondary flywheel has been sped up to spin at 1,080 RPMs. With the second flywheel spinning at that higher speed, we're creating a lot more airflow and we're also creating a lot higher discharge speed for the chips. With this significant increase in airflow, it really expands the range of materials that we can feed into the chipper, especially with those lightweight and leafy materials, and then reduces the chance of buildup within the chipper during use. With this increased airflow, it really increases your options for where you can place the chips around the chipper, be it to fill a truck or trailer, or just getting it off the trail. For the blades, we've gone with eight six inch long blades in a segmented pattern around the flywheel. When you're chipping the larger material, you're never taking more than a six inch pass, which really evens out the workload on the chipper and the tractor, making the chipper that much more efficient. Because we have a one inch thick flywheel, we've machined in the blades because they're reversible and we want to protect the secondary edge. So when you dull the leading edge, you can reverse the blade or flip it, undoing the three bolts and retorquing and giving you a fresh edge to cut with. When changing the blades, you're gonna be using our locking pin to lock out the flywheel's rotation. So we've got different locations that are gonna let you lock this flywheel for untorquing the blades and retorquing the blades, both for safety and for that mechanical lock for the torquing. While I'm back here, I wanna point out where the two inch main shaft bearing is housed. And I'll show you the Zerk fitting on top so you can keep it greased. Next, I wanna talk about our self-contained hydraulic infeed system. So by being self-contained, you don't require any hookups to your tractor or hydraulic remotes on your tractor. You simply hook up the PTO shaft. Once you engage the chipper and the PTO, it's gonna run our pump, which is located down here in the bottom. With that hydraulic pump, it's gonna draw oil from our oil tank here. We've got a filler cap and this oil tank holds 19 liters of hydraulic fluid or around five gallons. The pump is gonna start making hydraulic pressure and it's gonna bring that pressure up through the lines to our directional control valve first. And the directional control valve is where you're gonna select forwards and reverse or neutral for the infeed system. And that's basically sending the oil here to the infeed motor, which is gonna turn the infeed roller and bring that material into the chipper. Now to control the speed of that, we have a hydraulic flow control valve with a one to 10 range. And that's gonna let you control in the forwards direction, how fast that material gets fed into the chipper and find that balance between your, your tractor's horsepower and the speed that you can put the material through. The infeed motor is mounted to our swing arm that pivots here about the rear. And that pivots and opens up to allow the material to flow under our infeed roller. Now in this chipper, we use an eight inch diameter by 10 inch wide roller with chisel knife edges welded all the way around it. And we find those superior for climbing up over that material as you first start the infeed. We've opted to use stainless steel gas springs on our Pro Series. This gives us a more consistent force right from the start than our conventional coil springs. And it also provides a dampening effect for when the material's changing size and it keeps a constant pressure as it feeds it through. Now let's go around the back and we'll talk about the infeed chute. For an opening size, we have 29 inches in width and 27 and a half inches in height. So we've got a nice big opening. At the leading edge here, we have a solid bar with rounded edges. So when you're in feeding materials and the branches are coming up, this bar is helping create a nice steady flow over the edge of the infeed chute. Now we come to the red bar, which is centrally pivoting. And this is both a control for forward, neutral and reverse. It also acts as a safety bumper bar along the bottom of the chute. On the bottom of the infeed chute, we have two draw latches. And with those released, 
We're gonna be able to fold up the whole infeed and rest it on the rubber pad of the swing arm. And that's gonna greatly reduce the footprint of the chipper for storage. And it's also gonna reduce the length of the chipper for when we're driving through the forest or the woods. With the infeed chute flipped up, we can see the storage position of the linkage rod here. And then we also get a nice clear picture of our infeed curtains. So this prevents debris and dust from coming back at the user while you're using the chipper. With these curtains out of the way, we get a nice clear view of the infeed roller. Again, this is eight inches in diameter and 10 inches in width with the chisel edges. And this is gonna lift right up out of the way on that swing arm to allow the material up to eight inches to pass underneath. As we come around to the other side of the chipper, I wanna to first touch on the greasable bearing here that carries the infeed roller. We've got a Zerk fitting again for grease. I wanna to touch on the swing arm limiter. And this determines the clearance between the roller and the bottom of the infeed and basically determines the smallest material that you can put pressure on and feed into the chipper. Again, we've got our gas spring here in stainless steel, keeping the pressure even from left to right on that infeed roller. And then as we move a little further up, you're gonna see the bed plate. And the bed plate is the secondary edge to the cutting process. You've got your blades on the flywheel, and they're passing down and the bed plate works as a secondary edge to complete that cut. And this bed plate is tunable and you can adjust it to meet the clearances to the blades as specified in the manual. To provide visibility to the bed plate gap, we've provided a removable cover plate on the far side of the infeed, which gives you a clear line of sight to see the blades as they pass by that bed plate. I hope you've enjoyed this video about our TF810 Pro PTO driven wood chipper. For more information, please check us out online or give us a call. This has been Josh from Woodland Mills. Thank you for watching.